Hey everybody, it's the new here videos. Uh, we're still tackling the Ten Commandments, and we're jumping right in. What do we got first, Pastor? Well, I think today we're looking at the third and fourth commandments, and uh, you know, really succinctly put, uh, the third commandment is remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, and the fourth commandment is, as I teach my confirmation students, I say four, they say mom and dad, and so it's honoring mom and dad. And uh, more specifically, we'll probably get into this just in a little bit. Uh, the fourth, fourth commandment is not necessarily exclusively about mom and dad. It's about the gift of authority, mm -hmm. uh, the gift of those in authority above us. One of the things that we kind of have with this is we get to actually recognize there are going to be places where God works right now. And that's a really important thing. Like he's giving us these rules because he wants us to know where to find him working in this world. And so if he wants to talk to us, uh, he actually says, I want you to remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy because there's a place I actually want to be near with you. There's time I actually want to spend with you. This isn't just about a, a guilt trip for not paying enough attention in church or not going to church enough, but I actually want you to be sure that where, where you are is a place where I want to work. Yeah, you know, when when it comes to the third third commandment, I always used to think, you know, man, this is the date where, man, as a kid, you, you got to wake up and you got to got to go to church and some sort of curse that you know God is like, you know, get up and go to church. But the fact of the matter is, getting up and going to church, we go to church to receive a gift, receive His Word and sacraments. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord God says, "Hey, uh, when it comes to the gift, what, which we should also add that that uh, uh, every day is is a Sabbath day as we we rest and receive God's good gifts. And so we would not say it's exclusively just on Sunday, but but in our Western culture, we set aside Sunday as a time to rest, a time to go to church to receive again His Word and sacraments. And because if we don't have His Word and sacraments, uh, we're famished. Um, you know, we're, we're, we have empty stomachs." spiritually speaking. Um, it'd be like a sheep that does not have any food. Um, and if you have a sheep that doesn't have green grass um, or a tree, maybe using that metaphor of a tree not having water or sunlight, uh, we become famished. We become sick. We become, um, yeah, just, 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 just sick. I don't know how else to say it. And that's where God wants to feed us his good word so that we're healthy. Right. And it's not just a word that says be better, but it's actually a word that, that gives the very things that it's promised. When we are commanded to come to church, we we also receive the sacraments. We, we receive baptism. We receive Holy Communion. Uh, we, we hear God actually speak to us directly to confront the things that are keeping us up at night. And so all God is insisting here is that you should be able to find me. And I want you to look in the right place so that you never find the wrong stuff. Because there's a lot of places that all sort of claim to, to represent a, a greater wisdom or a higher power. Um, so how do you know you're listening to the right thing? How do you know all the religious books? claim to be the right religious book. So so why can't we just read them all? Right. You know, and and so yeah, so with third commandment, it's his holy writ, his holy word, his spoken word, and that word is Christ, uh, the one who was born unto us, lived among us, died for us, and rose from the grave. And so this is uh, the Jesus that speaks to us in his holy word. And so, yeah, we, we go on Sundays to hear from the eternal Christ, our Lord, who is at the right hand of the Father, who still speaks to us today through the mouths of simple pastors and uh, to proclaim that into our ears. And so, you know, you mentioned just briefly here about where do we go? You know, we have messages everywhere in this world. Uh, everybody is speaking, everyone's talking. But the church, think of the third commandment tied to the estate of the church, that church at least it should be, and in and, and many churches it is, and other churches, you know, tragically it isn't. But that is that one spot where you go uh, not to give your best to God, but you go to receive God's best in Christ. And that you hear, again, about your sin, you hear about the forgiveness of sins, you're uh, plunged back into that assurance of your baptism, your identity as a baptized child, and then your conscience is actually put at ease through that holy absolution. And then at the Lord's, Lord's table, your sins are forgiven and your faith is strengthened. Um, all good gifts coming to you on that, what, that blessed Sabbath time. Right. And if church is where you're you're going not to give, but to receive, it means the people in church, all of us are going to be needy. Uh, the people in church are not going to be perfect. And your pastor, you mentioned too, is, is not perfect. This actually helps us start to talk about the fourth commandment too, because God wants to work to take care of you through sinners. And it's, it's so foreign to us that we would never pick the parents that we have because we know who they are and we know them to be sinners. We, we would never pick the authority figures that we have because we, we, we well, we're profoundly dif disappointed in our politics almost all the time. Uh, but God says, no, look to these people, honor these people, because I will be working through these people, even though they're sinners. I want to care for you so much that I'll use sinners to do it. Yeah. And so the fourth commandment, uh, the antithesis, right? The, 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 the 
part of the fourth commandment is authority, but the antithesis of authority is anarchy. And mm-hmm. I don't think that the average person, I can't, even myself, I cannot comprehend the devastation that anarchy actually causes. Um, and it's usually the uh, the weak and the frail and the the young uh, that what are, are totally devastated by anarchy. Mm-hmm. And so the very fact that you and I are in our facilities, I'm here at the church, you're at your place, and and the very fact that I, I can drive here without being shot at and the bloodshed and Big war fan. and uh, the very fact that I, I I didn't have to you know uh, unchain the doors or there was you know maybe no prisoners crucified outside or something like that. The very fact that we have peace, God be praised for authority that's keeping good order because the opposite of that good order is anarchy, and so God works through uh, these means of uh, parents and teachers and judges and police officers and um, you know the military, all these different authorities. Uh, to keep good order, to keep anarchy from breaking out. And that goes back kind of the third commandment, when there's actually no anarchy, when there's peace, that allows the freedom for us to what? To 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 go to church, to, to read his word, not to be always looking over our shoulder, wondering if we're going to take a bullet for it. And so when you have peace and good order, uh, that actually complements the church, that we can what? Hear good news and hear good gifts. Uh, but anarchy itself, my goodness, when when anarchy breaks out, it is so incredibly devastating and hurtful. Right, and it's magnified by uh, the fact that this is a place where God would work the opposite. So like in the third commandment, God establishes that there should be a church. And so when the church would lie in the name of Jesus, it, it's profoundly evil. Um, and, and in the same way, when when parents and authority figures act outside of the will and word of God, uh, it, it, it's it's altogether so much more painful. These yep. these places are established so that we lean further into God's word and and, and there receive blessings from it. Uh, so it, it also lets us start to parse. There should be a church, but if your church is telling you lies about Jesus, that's a bad church. Yeah. And you, you should have parents and you should have a government. But if your government, for example, is is persecuting you, that's a bad government. And, and if your parents are, are telling you to run away from God's word and do evil things, then then you can say this is this is bad parenting. Um, but, but simply here, God establishes offices, places is where we can see him working and receive gifts from him. Yeah, and and, and I've heard it said before, these are really masks of God. And so God protects mm. me through police officers, you know, God-fearing police officers. God protects us through uh, fair judges, you know, and, and in the court of law. Uh, God serves us his word through pastors. And uh, this happens through means. And so we say, God be praised for protecting us. God be praised for feeding us and sustaining us in this life. And then again, that point when that does happen, where those are abused, uh, it's not the office. It's the person failing to live up to the nature of the office itself. Yeah. All right. Third and fourth commandment. Third and fourth.